it's Graham here at Crashtron, and today I want to take you through how we got to where we are today with Microsoft Teams Rooms. And there are now two platforms, Windows and Android. In my previous video, I went through how we got to Microsoft Teams Rooms from Link Room System, Skype Room System, Skype Room System version 2, and then Microsoft Teams. And that was always uh, based on Windows. So Windows 7, Windows 10, etc. But now we have two variants, Windows and Android. So Microsoft have recently put together a great guide on this. So to check out my previous video, look up in the top corner and you'll see the video there. That'll give you a little overview. But now let's transition to the differences between Teams Rooms on Windows and Android. So here we have the website and I'll put the link in the description below so you can easily access that. But what we have here is a nice comparison between the two platforms. This was updated last month, and actually two months ago now, uh, September. And remember, features are always changing, and uh, they're always slightly different. So the main features of the platform is you get that one-touch join. So just remember, on a Microsoft Teams room on Windows, you can join Skype, you can join Teams, you can join Direct Guest Join for Zoom and WebEx. So as we see here at the bottom, We've got that feature there, and that is also coming to Android. So for Zoom and WebEx, that is coming there. And you get that ability to do a meet now, so you can start an instant meeting, but also that proximity join. So by taking your cell phone and using that to start the meeting from that device. So again, quite a similar feature parity there between the meeting joining or starting experience. So in the meeting, um, there is the ability to, you know, change your layouts and do together mode and gallery, large gallery. And there's some new features coming to Windows for dynamic gallery, uh, etc. as well. And then next up, we have chat bubble. So that's just been released for Windows. That is then coming for Android. So that will a message appear at the top of your display to show that there's some messages there. So maybe you want to get your personal device out and look at what that link was shared. Maybe maybe it's a survey or a Q&A session, for example. You could see that when you're inside the room. And then the inclusivity features that you don't get on other systems. So if you're using traditional VTC systems, for example, raise your hand, lower your hand, lower your hand control that from that center of the room console. So all these great features that you have in Microsoft Teams are in the Microsoft Teams room as well. The ability to pin people. So um, there's two features here, pin and spotlight. Again, on Windows today, we'll come to the Android. Pinning means that's from my view. I can see what's been set up. I want to pin a certain number of participants that are, are talking and discussing. If I spotlight, I can spotlight multiple people, and that will do it for the whole meeting. So if you've got a large conference or you're doing uh, maybe a training session or a educational webinar, you may be doing some lessons. You want the teachers or tutors, for example, to be spotlighted for everyone. So that's what spotlight is there. Live reactions. So again, when people give you a thumbs up, heart, emojis, etc., that is there on Windows. And that is uh, then going to also come to the Android platform. The companion mode. So this is a uh, new feature again, using the mobile app. Companion, being able to use your cell phone, mobile device, and also use the device together. Closed captioning. So live translation messaging coming through at the bottom of the screen, available there on both platforms. The one of the other little differences that we have on Android is that it can be in a personal mode as well. So there are some features on Android. So when you sign in with your own account, rather than a shared meeting room license account or a Microsoft Teams room premium license, that is a little bit different. Uh, that's an open shared environment, obviously. But when you're in a personal mode, you can do things like whiteboarding and recording, which we just see down at the bottom. Um, coordinate a join. So that is available today uh, with the Surface Hub uh, and Windows. Uh, and then that cloud recording, uh, being able to uh, see the recordings and uh, that, those transcriptions available on both platforms. Whiteboard, so being able to ink. So if you've got a front of room touch display, so if you've got a large format display or a personal display that is USB connected to that Windows or Android platform, then you can start inking on there. Now to start that inking, etc., that is something that... Uh, is on the Android version in personal mode, not yet for Windows. And then intelligent content capture. So this has been available for a while on a list of certified devices, 
for the content camera is what it's known as and i'll put a link in the description um, on all the certified devices there um, but that will also come to the Android version. It's also been announced for the desktop as well, so that's really cool. Uh, being able to use the uh, digital whiteboard uh, on there. Uh, room remote control. So what we have today, uh, being able to control it on there, that's on both platforms, wireless sharing, uh, cast and mobile. They're the two features you're able to use, join a meeting, or just start a casting session directly from your uh, device. Video, 1080p. 30 frames per second so again cross both platforms another feature again when you're in the um device on the central room console you've got the full list of uh, roster uh, participants on there that you can see and then your voice skills so that's available uh, you can enable that by policy uh, i'll put a video in the link up there and how you enable and disable that per device that will also come to the android platform as well dual screen display support so again if you have one or two front of room displays that'll be available on both the platforms there making the device secure again a lot of the windows devices are mounted behind the screen and then a lot of the android devices are maybe like a collaboration bar and they're mounted above or below the, the, the display so they're securely mounted to the to the uh, wall etc um so fully secure up to date with uh you know usually the latest android uh, version there uh, kiosk mode that's just obviously windows it's locked down you cannot log in to the windows device as my account it's an appliance don't break it uh, if you break it you will break it and you'll have to re-image it so it's a kiosk mode secure for the microsoft teams room app and the same with the microsoft teams room on android it is secure um, it is locked down each manufacturer does their own thing on there so it uh, you can't just put any old android app on there uh, delegate management so again using things like teams admin center and uh, giving people permissions you're able to allow them to view and control say for device management um, and then again health monitoring is the device online are the peripherals connected you get all that in teams admin center but also you'll be able to get that in team uh, microsoft teams and premium that uh, means the android platform is also going to be in there very shortly as well so lots of configuration options that you can uh, deploy from there, from the Microsoft side of Windows and Android, and you can control it, but also use Microsoft Endpoint Manager for condition access policies, etc. as well. So really defining how you want to manage everything there. Call quality anal analytics, all within Microsoft uh, Teams Admin Center, but also recently mentioned as well, or announced, was real-time analytics. It's in public preview, so you can get that real-time information on the devices and where are they suitable for so you know the uh microsoft teams rooms they go from small medium and large custom spaces and then you have the android platform so today a lot of them are collaboration bar based so they are suitable for small medium uh, uh rooms and then there's some large rooms coming so for example here at crashton we have our android appliance coming so that's a new compute but using them standard mercury mini uh building on that with a soundbar and then with the hudley l uh, l1 for large rooms the hudley iq for medium rooms but then you could go into you know any sort of purpose room um with the windows platform when you're using partner integrations such as the uh, sure and telemix software loaded on that windows compute that's something you can't do on android you obviously can't side load applications on there that are certified so there is a limit of where the Android can go. Um, but because it's appliance-based and also there are other vendors such as the Logitech Roommate that may be able to go to those large rooms as well with those pan tool zoom cameras. So there we have it. That is an overview of the differences between Windows and Android. Yes, there are differences. There will be future differences. So for example, when you have the team scheduling panel outside the room and you want to have capacity notifications on the public roadmap, that is coming to Android first, but then we'll come to um, Windows later. So as I call it, chicken and egg, they're playing catch up with each other. We're getting near feature parity, but there will always be some differences like those large rooms uh, or multi-purpose rooms where you'll have things like that sure integration that is more suitable for the Windows platform. And then plugging in different cameras, etc. They're USB based peripherals that might come for Android. I don't know again having an appliance based uh, solution obviously you could have um, connectivity there but obviously with android all those drivers need to be preloaded with windows it can go and get them from the um, windows update for example 
so if you are planning on on the features that you need today obviously plan for what's available today there's a lot of things on the microsoft roadmap aka.ms forward slash mtr roadmap i'll put that in the link below where you can see all the list of details on the roadmap items coming for windows and android so ensure that what you're getting is available today and what you need to use um or you want to obviously look at that and take a gamble and uh, it's in the roadmap and it will come but just be aware things change um things get delayed development etc testing that's what microsoft do a lot they don't actually release a feature till it's passed uh, a full feature test from uh, many many of the testers uh, that i'm lucky enough one to be as well so ensure you get the right uh, feature set today so in summary there really shouldn't be a difference between the windows and android version for the end user anyway for me i want to walk in the room hit new meeting present whatever i need to do or my voice assistant the end user shouldn't know if there's a windows or an android platform in there that really should be an it decision are you more comfortable running you know 100,000 laptops and you're used to windows and endpoint manager or intune for, for managing those devices you may prefer the windows platform for the meeting room however if you're used to managing a lot of uh, android based devices and you're comfortable using endpoint manager and putting those policies appropriately for those meeting rooms on there then that could be your choice as well they're both secure regardless of where you put them in your meeting space so that decision is really down to your um it administration team who's managing the platform for you and again size of room and just remember you can mix and match if you want some rooms for windows remember those large space environments with ensure telemix for example and then for the smaller huddle focus spaces, maybe you want that Android space, that all-in-one collaboration bar or a small form factor on the table to have the Android compute in those spaces. So entirely up to you on the choice. Um, both are going to be a great experience for all your users to just simply join those meetings, whether they're native Microsoft Teams or guest join access, Zoom, WebEx, and hopefully more to come as well on there. So thanks very much for watching and listening. Hope you found it useful and see you soon. <laughs>